it works. So now you have a list of chapters. Okay, we take it later. <coughs> Anti-globalization was citizen involvement. There was more people involving in economic policies and to against trade party. We think we can understand the movement, but probably it could have targeted something different in addition. Okay. But trade founded on comparative advantages is beneficial. Also for low wage labor in developing countries. And he mentioned an example from Mexico. Of course, they are poor in Mexico, but the change of terms of trade gives them more money to buy food with trade than it is without trade. So then you would say they can buy drugs, but I think food is cheaper. They can sell drugs, well, not all of them will gain from it. So, yes, all of them could gain from it, from a very bad position to a not so bad. The content will be different and they could gain from it. Try to use the money not on in the hunting drug barons, but try to stop it and use the money for better purposes. Okay, protectionist approach to world trade could be understood in that context because you think it hurts those in low wage countries. But I'm afraid you have to remember our friend David. And his answer is they can <coughs> exploit a comparative advantage to get more out of the resources, and that will also benefit even those who <coughs> love <coughs> Could there be better standards? Yes. Could there be a banning child? work. Yes, it could. So probably the World Trade Organization and those trading should think of solutions to that. But still, trade is beneficial. The problem is domestic. So you have to solve it domestically. So if there are, let's say, inequalities within the society, the answer is not to ban trade. The answer is to use the money differently. Uh, if, if, if you keep it between us, I would say tax those who earn more to spend more of the money, let's say, on child education or children's, uh, let's say, improve children's standard of living. But since it's among us, you don't have to write it in your exam answer, because then it's not long, longer among us. So, remember that. The problem, according to Krugman, is simply this. This changes the condition for trade. Then there can be big firms outside the country who would come up with lawsuits and say, this is harming trade. So if you change labor conditions, change the wage level, it gives me, the large firm, problem with earning profit. If you are Microsoft and Apple, I would ask you to come back next Wednesday to run through a few more arguments before I feel that you have a good case. But I'm not uh, the one who will decide this 
in the courthouse. So I'm not the judge. And I might end up, as you might have observed, reading today's international newspaper on the internet. So there is an American who has been sitting on the death row for, I think, 30 years, accused for and sentenced to death for something he could not have committed. So I might have a very bad case here, but I still don't send any of you into that position. So I'm not trying to kill you with something. But I think there are solutions to this that could be improved by, for instance, better wage standards, by better labor standards. And it need not be harming faith. But the problem is, if you ask me, and you are a pilot in Norwegian, the problem is Ireland. But you don't know it yet. We can take it later. So all the way, and this is why I say, even on Tuesday morning, when you wake up and still have a headache, it is because of David, not because of the wine you had on Sunday night. Remember one thing, comparative advantage means that you produce more of what you are good at. Reduce the use of resources, of things you are not as good at. And since there are two countries, one is better than the other when you compare them. There can be, let's say, lower cost in any production in that other country. But then you have to remember one thing. They have limited resources. They have restriction of what they can produce. There is a finite production they can end up in. The best way is more of your export production simply because it gives you more money and more import because it's much cheaper to import than produce yourself. And then you remember that what I import foreign so they get more for their export, even though I get it for half the price here. Because the price was a quarter, so they doubled their price. What happens to their import? They use half the resources. We can offer them for quarter of their resources, so they get it for half the price. Even though they could have produced it at a lower cost, they have chosen to produce more export. So the resources is already put into production. We cannot produce two things out of one resource. If you can do that, call me and we call our product Apple Microsoft because then we double the profit. There are a few exceptions. One is the production structure, and the other one is, here it is, what is inside, I won't mention this head, but all the others, knowledge. So, one, we have said five times, I think it is, support production of knowledge. And the easiest way to produce it is in schools or universities. Who should pay for them? government. I'll tell you a secret if it also be kept me among us. If you read Stiegler's book, a price, The Price of Inequality, he quote research that proved that the private paid American education system performed worse than the public system. It simply means if you try to pay for the knowledge you want, you can get it free from the public sector and you get more knowledge of it. So that is one. Use more money because this system is the most efficient one. Even in the US where you can buy most of the things that you want. At least a cinema or a computer. But the price is very high if you ask me because it's a Microsoft or an Apple product. And the education system is 
well, better to do it publicly. Two, it is also a point that we could have, I hope you can see it, it looks like a graph, doesn't it? If I say x is quantity, then I ask you, what is c? Or cost? We can call it uc, then it is unit cost. And if unit cost looks like this, we call it eos, which means so the more you produce, the lower unit cost it will be. So in this case, let's say this is PD, which is the price for domestic consumption. Okay? Then we start to trade. What happens to the price if they only need to cover their cost? Is price goes down. So domestically, you save money. So if you can improve trade, so the cost of production is reduced, you get this as extra. Let's call it a Christmas gift because it looks like a box, doesn't it? In the box is not a hat, not a rabbit, but values. So these are the values you can come up with if you generate more production because this is exported. So that is also an additional gain. You can produce the same goods at a lower price. So you save money. And then you will ask me, what should I do with this? And I have three answers. Don't buy you a Microsoft computer. Two, don't buy you an Apple cell phone or an iPhone. Don't buy yourself an Italian car. If you have nothing else to spend your money on, save it for your children's education in the future. Because the one who should pay for the Italian car is a multimillionaire in Beijing who has an Econess Restless and he can afford it. Not you. So the country save money if they can increase the production with economy of scale. So there are two reasons why you should do it. Put something into their head and call it knowledge, or save resources because production is less costly. So support it. Would this mean anti globalization argument? I'm afraid the answer is so attack has a very good purpose but be careful if you reduce trade because then you can lose this in addition so this is extra benefit what do we call it infant industry this is trying to remember last week why, call it, why do we call it infant industry? It's not producing kids. It's a new, it simply means it has started a new life. As an infant, you start a new life. So this is simply means you start a new industry. So don't think of this as Danish donors in Norway for females that are not able to have kids, they go to Denmark. It is not that kind of industry, okay? So don't mix it with that. But have a nice trip in Copenhagen. It's a nice place to be. Economy of scale simply makes more out of resources. You can produce the same good at lower cost. So the more you can ex or, uh, create economy of scale activity, you save money. <coughs> it's hard to find. If you ask me, that is an example of economy of scale. Should be an additional reason why it should not be one Microsoft, but a thousand of them. 
Have they done this before? Yes. It started in Asia. We call it the Japan, <coughs> Japanese wonder. It continued in Asia, and we call it South Korea, Hong Kong, Malaysia, and Singapore. Then came Brazil, wasn't it? Brazil, Russia, South Africa, India, and China. I don't think there is a link between the four new industrial countries and the flight to China. Because it left from Malaysia, which is one of the industrialized countries. So I don't think that is the link. So if you want to search for the aircraft, I think it is to the west of Malaysia, not to the south. No. But let's see what they come up. Okay? Import production is probably the least profitable thing you can do with the Asian wonder. There are so many already producing this. Why on earth should we do it? And can we get it for a quarter of the price from South Korea? And we call this a super tanker. <coughs> Which of them are biggest? They are large crude carrier. So the last three letters stand for large crude carrier. Which of them are bigger? Because that is ultra. And ultra is bigger than very. If you ask me, the American language is sometimes hard to understand. Why is ultra larger than very? Okay, here's the one. Okay, yeah. But they were produced in South Korea. They could do a large production of it. They got economy of scale. So part of the Asian wonder was simply exhibiting economy of scale production. So when we go back, and I think I will be a counselor for the Central African Republic's new Prime Minister. And the first thing we will say when it's silence around us, the last shooting has ended, the last gun is collected, so we can sit down at the table in the center of the capital. The first thing I will tell him is this. I know my Ricardo, my colleague, uh, Paul has learned me one thing. You benefit from trade. The first thing you will do is educate all these young soldiers because now they do not have a gun, so now they can put it in a classroom and learn and something. And what they should learn is something that ends up with an export production. And then he will look at me and say, No, I want my own car produced in my own country. And then I will say, own Germany. You get them much cheaper there. And they know they are too expensive. Okay. Call South Korea. I don't like the brand. And I say, well, call China. You can get it even cheaper from there. So there are cheaper versions out there. Why should they have a car producer in the Central Republic of Africa where they have almost nothing? And my answer would be, no car production. And I wouldn't say over my dead body because somebody would then collect a gun and I'm dead before I finish my sentence. But I would say, use your resources to produce for export market simply because they pay more for what you produce with your resources. And then you say, yeah, what should I use the money for? To educate your young students, to give them better health service, whatever you want to, but that would help the nation. If you export, by using the resources for export production, you earn more out of your resources than anything you can do. Okay? And since we have health education here, I will take one of the nurses newly educated here to the you know, central Republic of Africa, 
And since this is a male, I will also call all of them that it's a female nurse, so it can bring both with them. To show that both sexes can do the same services, public services, if it's paid by the public sector, and that would help the Central Republic of Africa. If you wonder who, colony, who colonized it, I'm afraid the answer is not Germany, but Germany's neighbor to the southwest. So they speak French there. So my lecture in English wouldn't be understood. So this course will be not be broadcasted in the Central Republic of Africa. So if you spend your holiday in the Central Republic of Africa, you are not able to follow the courses because it's in English. Is it the only one answer to developing? Well, the distinct Ricardo was right. He's been right for more than 200 years. And then you will say, when I become writer, I will come up with a new idea. Right? <coughs> Call me then, and we drop the textbook of Kuhlman. But you have to write a new textbook before we drop it. Why is Kuhlman opposing what he called cultural homogenization? Why is he opposing McDonald's all over the world if you don't get anything in addition? How many of you love McDonald's? Who would join me to the sushi bar if the alternative is McDonald's? Would you? Okay. Who would join me to see Pepper's Pizza if the alternative is McDonald's? Okay. Who would drop Kentucky Fried Chicken if it can offer you a very good French restaurant in southern Malaysia where they serve very good French food based on local food? So that is his point. The more we have of what we can let's say, consume, the better off we are. So if all of us had to go to a McDonald's every time we wanted to go out, I would have to go alone because my wife would be nigh to go to any McDonald's. And then you would say, then your wife will be happy, so she need not see you that evening, and probably. But then my kids would come in and say, we make you homemade food. So that is the alternative. So yes, to cultural multi cultural uh, production. So if I come to US, I can see Starbucks, Stageway, McDonald's, uh, Pizza would be Dolly Dimple probably, Pizza Hut. If you ask me, I think Peppers is better than Pizza Hut. Okay? And then you can see why we want both of it. Yeah? So that is the answer. We need a different sort of consumption. We are better off if we can choose. If you don't believe me, I'll send you to North Korea, to the countryside of North Korea, not to a camp, but to the nearest countryside where you can find a place to eat. All of you will get the same food, I think I stick to China. So if I'm allowed to, I cross the border, leave North Korea, because there's more choices in China than in Korea. And I think I'm better off. Maybe the North Korean countryside food is very good. I don't know. I haven't been there. My ex-brother-in-law uh, has been there once. He was not very impressed over the food and something else too. But I think we are better off if we can choose a mode, let's say, a menu. Would you love to go to a restaurant where there is one dish, probably a dessert in addition? If you can walk across the street and find another one where you have a lot of menus, which one would you choose? Yeah? So that is what he's trying to say. It increases our choices as consumers. 
and you are better off. And then you say it's more expensive. Yeah, but the reason why I go there is I have the money. I plan to to spend the money, not because of the oil fund, because I have a work at home that gives me enough revenue so I can go to a restaurant that I can choose and have a taste. So that is one. It is beneficial to all of us if I can buy French food in Norway, Italian food in Norway, Norwegian food in Norway, from northern Norway and southern Norway. I can buy Danish cheeses and so on. When I was at your age, no one could buy a Norwegian pizza. Can you buy Norwegian pizza now? Okay. The first time I served my elder sister a taco was in 1981. Then my brother-in-law had returned from uh, San Francisco where he had been an exchange student. And we served in tacos. Oh, I've tasted it in California because it's Mexican food, not American food. Do you think he was better off having Norwegian mushed potatoes and sausage compared to a taco? I see you don't. Okay. So that it is all individuals gain from faith simply if it is multicultural. Uh, one of the most fascinating time we had in London because in the old days when the students were much richer than you are we took them for a week excursion to London. One of the nicest experiences was at the Vietnamese restaurant in London. Probably the food was not too Vietnamese but it was okay. As a student, 10, 15 years earlier, I had been to the Netherlands. And since Jeroen is now still here, and it was in Amsterdam, we went to an Indonesian, Vietnamese restaurant in the Netherlands. I was better off that evening than I had been with all the mushed potatoes and sausages I had in Norway the last 17th, 17th of May. Yes, it's better for the individual. And now, since you are very clever students of economics, if it's better for the individual, it's also better for the society. Because if one individual is better off, basic microeconomic theory, it's better off. So as long as one of you benefits from it, it's better. So the first time you had sushi in Norway, no, one of our late colleagues was very fond of sushi. He came with the tradition from outside. So the first time I tested it out was with a colleague of mine. Is it a Norwegian tradition? No. Is it a Norwegian tradition now? Yes. You can get raw fish, eat it from bite in the shops. I think it is better than you make it yourself, but that's a different story. But it's okay. For those incoming students, have you tasted Norwegian raw fish? Never? Never smoked salmon? Okay. We have different sorts of salmon that is raw. You know them. Some is made in the central of Norway. It's just put it into the earth. It's half rotten, but it's very good in mustard on it. Is that correct? It's a favorite for some Norwegian, as long as you have mustard to it. Oh, you don't like it? Yes, you see. We had sushi, but we didn't call it sushi, but it was. So, yes, as long as we get more cultural supply of any product. Okay. Do you think that Norwegian always bought German cars? No. Why don't we buy only German cars? It's for the same reason. If you ask one of the Norwegian students why they don't drive a German car, it's not because their grandfather fought in the Norwegian war 50 or 60 years ago, but it's simply because they prefer French cars. 
or if you ask me, who wasn't born at, uh, in the wartime, although I look like one, <laughs> I prefer Japanese cars. So that is for the same reason. We want something that our neighbors are not very fond of. And as long as one of us are happy with it, it's good for all of us. So go back to Paris and say, part of your agenda, agenda is OK, but some of it had to be adjusted a little bit. The more you export, the more you can import. If you don't believe me, call your Japanese colleague is now a student at Yokohama and will tonight have fresh Norwegian sushi on the table at the restaurant because it's flown in from northern Norway just two days ago. Okay? The next and last problem, we won't have time to discuss this time, but that is environment problem. We take a very short, quick run through what it is about. It is the place where we need a world government. Why do we have environment problems? Is we produce energy. And some of this energy is produced by fossil fuels. Fossil fuels produce CO2. And then you will look at me and say, carbon is the main cornerstone of every living organism, but not carbon dioxide or CO2. <coughs> it destroys the ozone layers. It creates greenhouse gases and pollution. Some of them are local, some of them are regional, and some of them are global. Local ones are spread in ground. So if there is a local pollution, it's simply in the ground. If it is in the water, it's a regional. If I say acid rain, you haven't heard of it. Okay. Then we will talk about acid rain next time. What should be the chapter next time? Could it be 15? Any strong objection to 15? First time, second time, 15 is chosen. Do you have any other chapters that you would love to go through? Yes? Like last time, 21. 21? 19? 3? Okay. Now we have three chapters and five lectures. If you don't come up with any other numbers, we do as we would do in Idi Amin's tiny Uganda. I suggest and those who object end up with the crocodiles when it comes to influence, okay? But if you have very strong interest in 17 or 18, you can send me an email and I will think it over once again, okay? Now it's three and a half minutes to run and two minutes to wait for the bus. Have a nice weekend. See you next week. Chapter 12, no, 15. 15, 15, 15.